pretty much everything those uh, TV home renovation shows does, I do the opposite. And you know something? I love it. Anyway, today we're going to be ripping out some basement windows and hopefully putting new ones in. I'm hoping this isn't as ridiculously complicated of a job as I think it is. As I mentioned in my previous video, I tend to overthink things. So, let's get down to business. I've got one helper here with me. I don't know where the other one is. I think he's upstairs. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is remove the window sash. Which is screwed in with, of course, flat head screws, which are always fun to remove. an idea. What I'm going to do is just cut these in half so they're easier to remove. Ugh.
Now, I should be able to remove the buck in pieces rather than in one piece. Those wood pieces are grooved and they're set into the concrete with a ridge. So it just makes it that much harder to remove. Sorry, little spider. my blade was dulling. <laughs> Damn. Well, that happens. So we got the window out completely. Let's take a look at it. You can see that it's grooved for her pleasure. Um, now that's to make it easier. Well, what that does is it allows the window frame to lock into the concrete permanently uh, once the walls are poured. Um, but the replacement's not going to be put in that way, of course. That's really kind of a new construction kind of thing. So let's take a look at the window frame I have. I'm going to sweep up the mess out of there. And let's see. I got the window frame all prepped. I got the nail fins off. And I've got the window sash removed to make it easier to handle and reduce likelihood of breakage. The instructions say not to do that but um, the instructions are also about the size of a post-it note so um, yeah I don't really trust them let's kind of clean this up for posterity we'll see how that window fits and uh, what kind of modifications we're going to have to make to make it a good nice and tight install right, so these new ones are going to be installed this way perfect fit. That is a perfect fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to, actually it's going to be a lot easier than I thought. Um, we're going to anchor these in place. We're going to get some shims. We're going to anchor them in with some uh, tap cons. And yeah, they're going to go right into that ridge right there. Okay. Yeah, these are a perfect fit. What I might do is put a piece of, um, I'm going to get some PVC lumber. We're going to put a, uh, kind of a cap up there to close in that opening a bit. 
So I gotta go to Home Depot and get that. Actually, I'm gonna go to Lowe's. They have a bigger selection of of uh, fake lumber. Um, I'm gonna get a concrete chisel and I'm gonna remove this ridge because it's gonna be in the way when I get, when I start trimming this out. But overall, this is gonna be nice. Very nice. Okay. So I think I know what I need to do, and I'm gonna go do it. I need a chisel, a good one. I've got a hammer, I need a chisel. I'm gonna chisel out this. I'm gonna get myself some uh, <coughs> PVC lumber because it never rots. I, 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 you know, I might just do pressure treated. Yeah, let's just get some pressure treated lumber. We'll, do, we'll make it a little easier. And um, about two fingers or so to make up there on the top. This is an exact replacement window for this opening, so that's that's a bonus right there. All right, about a chisel. This is a uh, a mason's chisel, and what I want to do is remove that lip. It doesn't need to be there, which could potentially get in the way of any later trim work I decide to do. get the idea. I cut a piece of uh, one by eight pressure treated to the exact width of the opening and that's going to go up against the mud sill or sill depending on what your term is, term of preference. I've chiseled away all of the um, this lip that used to hold in the old window because it doesn't have a purpose anymore and to clean it up a little bit. Um, I've got a lot of concrete bits everywhere, but that's okay. I'm gonna screw that up in place. Now what I'm gonna do is put a strip of uh, foam between that piece and the sill, really just because. Um, I'm thinking, you know, it's just one more barrier for insects to bore into and whatever, doesn't hurt. Foam never hurt anybody. Um, so let's do that and then we'll start blocking and attaching the window frame. Okay, so here's what we got. The window frame is in place. It is in the correct, you know, it's not upside down or anything. I did screw it in three places to the, uh, to the sill. Instructions say not to, but um, I don't see any inspectors here, do you? All right, so I've got the window centered and I've got these amusing composite shims because they'll never rot. Someone made a comment about my hatred towards composite decking. Composite decking and composite shims are pretty much made the same way in, in a way, but the reason I don't like composite decking is because it tends to um, warp badly um, over time. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's not installed correctly. Um, but that's not here or there. But composite shims, on the other hand, are hidden away in the walls and they don't change thickness and they don't rot. And they're not going to warp because they're not kind of apples and oranges situation if you, if you think about it. Um, but they are made of wood. There's actual wood fibers. I don't know why they even bother putting wood fillers in there, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so we're going to use a hammer drill. We have to drill in some mounting holes. And uh, I'm looking at the situation now, and those are going to be uh, just because of where they have the... Here, I'll show you what the outside looks like. I've got it pretty much flush with the wall. I'm going to have to take my... I'm going to get my um, 
my watch and jigger, and I'm going to get it perfectly flush. Get my uh, my level. And we're going to tap that out a little bit more. There we go. So that way it's nice and flush with the wall. As for this right here, this gets filled in with uh, mortar. This whole bottom edge and the sides all get filled in with mortar. So that's the plan. Bought a mortar box, a bucket of mortar mix, and I'm gonna just kind of slather it in with my trowel, and that'll fill in the edges and sides permanently. Now, one thing that's nice about these window, um, these window uh, holes, <laughs> is that they're sloped. The concrete is sloped down, so if a little bit of water gets in there, it's gonna go outside. It's gonna drain right back out, or it'll collect, and we'll know there's a leak. But it's not gonna come into the house for sure. All right, got my hammer drill set up. Let's uh, let's get you set up. And I'm gonna take a one last look at that. I'm gonna grab my, my level. And I'm just gonna make sure that the window frame or window buck is flush with the wall. ones first so I get the process down. Push this drill bit out a little more. I don't think it's going to be deep enough for the screw. And what happens with, I don't like using Tapcons, but they're really the best solution on the market for this job right now. And I have a ton of them. The thing I don't like about Tapcons is they tend to cam out as you're driving them in. Um, it's really not fun. have to be driven in with a hammer drill so yeah they're just all kinds of challenging um, that's what we got a little trick I figured out with these tap cons what happens a lot to me is the concrete dust gets stuck in the hole and the faster never goes in all the way and then it cams out so what I like to do is I like to blow a little bit of air in the hole to clean it out first. Put it right down in there. And uh, that has actually really helped me get more success with these sorts of fasteners. Works really well. So. All right, let's put a Phillips bit in our Hammer drill. Uh, this hammer drill, I wouldn't buy again. This is, um, I bought this drill when I, like, the day I bought this house, actually. Um, I just kind of took my, um, I went over to Lowe's and I just went on a spending spree. And I bought tools and stuff. Well, I bought this drill and the problem with this is it has very low torque. It doesn't have enough torque at low speeds. So when driving in tap cons, it really struggles sometimes. Um, I don't know where that one went. 
went. Let's go grab another. It struggles because I have to really give it throttle. And this is a delicate operation. You really don't want to be you know, giving it the beans, so to speak. Um, because you run the risk of either damaging what you're working on or camming out and then finding and winding up with a Tapcon that you can't even remove anymore. I mean, it's just... textbook actually that worked pretty well all right let's give the other one that worked really well that one actually went into anything but it did no it definitely did so now all we have to do is we're going to trim back the um gonna trim back oh, i'm not going to bother putting one over here because it's screwed in up in the head side so let's get some blades we're going to trim the uh shims and use this blade right here so those tap cons worked out nice. This is now part of the house. Cool. Break off. <clears throat> well, some are easier than others, but I'm not really worried about the inside more than the outside. Side shims. Okay, actually, these are designed to break right where they sit. That's not bad. Look at how nicely that worked out. This window is now installed. Alright. Not bad. So before we do any concrete work, we've got to do some um, some foaming. So I've got some backer rod. Let's make sure the let's make sure the window fits though. You never know; it could have gone out of square in the process. So let's go grab the window um, the window sash and put it in. Okay. The window sash here. I'm gonna put it, uh, make sure that these hooks are vertical, like that, see those? So we can get them right into the uh, window frame.
those is. Oh, I put a screw in the dumbass. I mean, it works, but that screw can't be there, so let's take it out. Yeah, I'll have to put it somewhere else. I'll have to relocate it. Um, in relation to the latch, it's in the way. Screws right on the door from the outside. Hold on. happened was that screw went exactly where the latch goes, which, um, you know, that's not a good thing. We fixed it. There we go. And that is how you install a basement window. But we're not done. We still have to, uh, yeah, and that thing is perfectly square, totally square. Um, it's not going anywhere. Love it. Let's see if I can break that shim off. Right, it's not going anywhere. I think so. Look you know, how nicely that works. I love it. I love it so much. Okay. Now we're gonna get some backer rod where it matters and uh, start foaming. Foaming at the mouth. Uh, Alright, where did I put my spray foam? Just kidding. Um, I'll put it back. Okay. Well, that's all foamed in. You can still see a couple of gaps here and there. Um, you don't want to go crazy with the foam. Um, that's the one thing that a lot of people make the mistake of. They use way too much foam. And what you got to realize is the stuff expands. You know, it's going to expand all on its very own. Um, so almost double to triple the size that you put in. So if there's any small gaps, pinholes, you should fill in uh, as the stuff does its thing. But yeah, there is a gap. Yeah, it will fill in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it will. So you don't want the stuff spilling out all over the place. Um, that's going to happen, but... Um, as for the, so what I need to do is make sure that when this is fully cured, I trim it back as far as I can go because I'm going to be putting mortar in here. Um, maybe not mortar. I might just go with a, with a caulking, a gray siliconized caulking. I think that'll do the job. I don't need to use mortar here, but I do need to use it here. No question. Um, so I guess now we do some cleanup and we do our next window. That's that simple. I'm going to put the spring, uh, the uh, screens back in later. I'm not worried about that right now. But I'm going to 
I'd probably put a bead of caulking up here too. So, yep. Oh, and it's very important that you use a product meant for windows and doors. When you're using um, foam, the stuff over here. And I like these cans. These are the reusable ones. So normally they, they come with a plastic straw that you can never, once it cures in the straw, the can's junk. Um, these are okay. This is a, this is a, a self-closing straw. I've had good luck with these. Um, but this is the window and door product. That's what you want to use. You don't want to use the stuff in the black can. That will destroy the window. Um, that stuff is so freaking strong. This stuff is what they call minimal expansion foam. So it doesn't expand as much as the other stuff does. Um, so the problem with window, the problem with using, using the wrong foam is it's so strong and it expands so much that it can actually bow the window frame or door frame, whatever the case may be, uh, inward and enough to prevent the door from ever opening again. Um, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind. I don't know how I'm gonna finish it on the inside. I'm gonna paint and try to maybe, I got some mortar mix, so I'll probably try to patch up some of the big chips. But I'm not gonna go crazy making it look pretty, but I will paint it, that's for sure. But having a window that opens is just golden, and it's, it's so nice. Um, while I was at Home Depot just a few minutes ago, I looked at what they had on the stock and they actually have the same size windows that Lowe's offers, um, but I found the quality to be far less. It's weird, they're more expensive, but they have a plastic latch and the frame just looks chintzier. It, something about the frame and that window just looked very poorly made to me. I, I it just, and they're made by Thermatru, but these are made, these are not made by Atrium, these are made by some other third party uh, contractor that Lowe's may have hired to make windows. So, um, the reliable windows are usually made by Atrium, but these are not that. Uh, these are definitely a step above, a step below, but um, not a bad little window though. My first window installed, guys. Seriously, this is my first window ever installed. I've never done this before, not even remotely. So, I'm very happy with how this came out. Hopefully I can replicate my success over there and uh, we'll be on the roll. Okay, so we took out this other window here. I've already dressed the opening. I've chiseled off what I needed to. I've swept it and um, getting ready to prepare the new window for install. So let's take a look at that. This one, um, just again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all three of these larger windows. One, two, three, yeah. I'm gonna do these three windows and I'm gonna do the um, the grouting, if you will, the uh, the mortaring and all that stuff on all three at the same time. So I'm, not, I'm only going to seal them with foam right now. Then once all three are put in, I'll go back and uh, <clears throat> with my trowel, I'm going to do all that. In the meantime, I'm waiting for one particular window that I had to custom order for the computer room okay so now we're going to prep this uh, this next window I'm going to cut the, the foil out of foil. I'm going to cut the uh, plastic wrap off now I don't know why but all of these windows say to remove the plastic wrap immediately after purchase I don't know why that is. I have two possible explanations. Some of you might have an answer. Here are my, here are my thoughts. One of two things. Plastic wrap tends to shrink over time, which can permanently distort the window. I mean, that sounds good, right? So either that, or it's because of continual outgassing of the materials that the window's made of and those chemicals that are outgassing could damage seals, or whatever. Who knows? Um, I don't know the answer. Maybe one of you does. All right, I'm gonna take a brand new blade. 
and we're going to remove our nail fin. No power tools needed. It's really easy to do. Just like that alongside the, is that in frame? Yeah. I'm going to go right along, make sure there's nothing in the path of the blade that could potentially not grow back. Um, there we go. And then you just push it down and crack it off. There we go. That's simple. It's that simple. And we'll do this one. I'm going to go three passes with the blade. Blade's getting dull. There's five. There we go. One. You know, I felt kind of guilty removing that window because there was really nothing wrong with it. I, I could have saved that last window. But, you know what? They should all match, right? Oops, went off course there. Of course, once that happens, it always wants to go off course. Yeah, I got a little bit of a nub here on, the, on this. Uh, it's on the bottom. I could leave it, but I'm not gonna because you know, it just seems it just seems wrong. You could leave it, but we're not gonna. Vinyl is pretty soft, pretty easy to work with. Now, of course, if we were looking at, um, if we were working on a nice, beautiful Victorian home, I wouldn't be doing vinyl windows. Um, if you really want to see a great YouTube series, I highly recommend watching this series. There's a gentleman and his, I believe his girlfriend that are rehabbing a turn of the century, like late, late 1890s, um, I guess you call it a mansion, if you will. In St. Louis, and the YouTube channel's name is The Second Empire Strikes Back. Or The Second. Is it the Second Empire? I guess The Second Empire Strikes Back. Um, it's a, a you know, play on words. Like, it's like The Empire Strikes Back, but it's The Second Empire, which is that era. Well, anyway, let's get this window apart. Gonna remove the window from the frame. We do that. Okay, we just need to unhitch these two clips, one on either support arm. One. Two. And then we're going to pull these out of their pins, slide the window up and out. And we're going to test fit it, but pretty much 
the process will be exactly the same as the one we just did because these windows, the original windows were manufactured rather than made on site. So what that means is they were all made the same way, all three of them, except for that weirdo on the end of, over there. But they're all made the same way um, in the same factory by the same craftsman. So I don't expect any real deviations. The only difference between the window openings will really be in the subtle variances in the manufactured windows that were originally installed. But the, um, the mudding that happened afterwards, after the forms were stripped away from the wall, somebody came in with a trowel and filled in any gaps and made it look pretty. So that part is gonna be different on that window and on that window. But the rest of it will be the same. I don't really see a point in repeating myself again um, and showing you how to put the window in. But if I, if I run into any issues, I'll restart the camera and we'll go through it again. But I don't anticipate that. But once again, I'm gonna have to cut a piece of pressure treated lumber. Look at how nice this sill is, by the way. These sills are perfect. I'm so happy about that. Um, I think they're actually pressure treated. Um, I think in 1954 they had pressure treated lumber, so they would have been pressure treated sills, which is amazing because if this house were from 1900 or before, um, we would be looking at new sills. <laughs> so now this window, it is installed exactly at the same point that this one is. Um, one thing I noticed though, uh, where's my little torpedo? Oh, there it is. So this window, let's see if it's level. Let's see, we're going to use the window frame. It's a little off, not by much. Um, if I put it over here, put it over here. Okay, so that window is just a little kicked off a bit. This window looks like it is, but it's not. This one should be dead on. Yeah, it is pretty much, just a little bit off, not by much. But here, here's what I'm, what I'm, what I'm going, where I'm going. So, the window gap is off on all three sides in relation to the foundation. Here's what I found. The so I screwed my windows to the um, to the sill, which is level, but the window opening is not. So here's what I think happened when they when they poured the foundation. They had the window box in crooked. Well, this one was in a little crooked. So the opening is off by maybe a sixteenth of an inch difference. See, yeah, see this side right here? This one, you see the gap narrows at the top, widens at the bottom. Let me zoom in a little bit. I can see it, maybe you can't, but I can see it. Um, there's nothing, I, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, it is level. <laughs> the window is level pretty much dead on so yeah stuff like that you're gonna find hell even on a new house I bet but this one oh, look at that it opens nice real nice I like how it seals nice it, it, it's a very tight seal um, I like that but we can open these up on nice dry you know fall days and ventilate the basement it's it's just it's just a nice thing to have and it's funny because no house i've ever lived in has had working basement windows ever i've never lived in a house that had working basement windows i mean that this is the first time it's not exciting but to me it is um so anyway i got one more to do out of this batch and then i've got you know, that this window is going to be a bitch. I, I just know it. Um, I've, I've done two so far, so I have my process down. But I've got to clean out all this stuff. Everything's got to go. I'm going to make a freaking mess. So I might do this one tomorrow. I might take the rest of the day and, and kind of do some cleaning up of my tools, get some things organized, and then tomorrow I'll tackle this one. Um, but I got these two are done. I'm not putting the screens in until I get the uh, until I finish it out on the outside. Whether I use caulking or cement depends on how big the gap is. Um, but I'm really excited. This is this is finally off my plate. Just totally off my plate. Now, oh, one more thing to save time and effort. 
when I put that header piece in, I'm going to call it a header. It's not really a header, but what I did is I put my foam on both sides and stapled it in place uh, to streamline the production line process. I, so as I'm cutting, so I cut the board and then I, I attach the foam on both sides. That way I can just screw it in place and it's already there. And that foam provides a permanent, you know, at least an air seal. It's not really watertight, but it is airtight uh, between the window and the outside. So um, the, all the water tightness really has to happen down here, not up here. This, this is fine. If the property floods, it's going to leak no matter what. So, and it's never flooded in over a couple hundred years. So we're going to let this all, all cure up and then maybe tomorrow we'll get that last window in place and then we'll start mudding. I mean, what I mean is concrete work. And when that's all cured, this will all get painted. I might put some wood trim or something in here, make it look nice. Um, not really sure if I'm going to do that, but hey, it's a, it's a nice thought either way. So Now as for trimming, uh, trimming a basement window, personally, I'm going to use AZEC or PVC trim because the stuff lasts forever. Um, when it's on the inside, it's not as subjected to the thermal expansions. So if it's what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use uh, construction adhesive and adhere it to the to the masonry. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to nail it. I'm not going to staple it or glue it. I mean glue it. I'm not going to use tap cons. I'm going to do it that way because um, you know I, I think it'll look nicer if I don't have screw holes everywhere. Um, and there's no wood to attach it to, really. So um, that's how I'm going to do that. And uh, so we're going to we're going to trim it out at least in the bedroom, in that in that bedroom, in that computer room. That'll be trimmed out. These won't be. These will probably just I might just do some kind of a rough trim out of ASIC, but those I'm going to do really nice um, with with it with uh, probably with wood. But um, all right, onward and upward. At least this project is halfway done and I've learned a few things in the process and I feel a lot more confident in my abilities now that I've done two of them. I know what to expect. I know how they were put in. I know the dimensions. It, 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 it is nice having at least two of these done so you really know what you're up against when you start doing the more difficult ones. So now I'm going to do some cleanup. Call it a day. Maybe go to a car show. I think there's a car show today. I'm going to try to go there. What the hell, right? All right, I uh, I decided, you know what? Got all the stuff out. I'm in the right frame of mind. Let's just do it. Here we go. The computer room window's done. Um, and when I say done, I mean it's uh, ready for, you know, finishing. And uh, interior finishing on this window is going to be a little bit more elaborate than the others. This one's going to get... Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to do some AZAC trim boards and stuff. Um, it's an awkwardly shaped window opening, but uh, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Um, yeah, I'm still brainstorming how I want to do that. But I am thinking AZAC is the way to go because it is rot proof. It is termite proof. It is ant proof. It is, it is mold proof. It never crinks crink traps. No, it never... <laughs> cracks, warps, or shrinks. Now these I'm just going to probably just do some caulking around the opening and then just do some paint and that's it. That's all That's all she's getting. But the exterior is going to definitely need the most work. So let's uh, see how this one opens and closes. Again, I'm not putting screens in yet because I don't want them to get ruined as I'm doing all the other work on the outside. But they just slip right in. But uh, the kitty's going to spend a lot of time up here, I can tell you that. Absolutely. Look at that. Oh, it opens. Nice breeze coming in. Love it. I love it. Love it. Oh, so nice. So very nice. Now this is uh, this is one of the windows that I have to do a window well. I've got to dig it down, drainage rock, window well. Um, I have to do that because otherwise, it's just going to get backed up with water. Water splashes up. Now the window sill when I took it out was completely soaked. 
Um, we haven't had rain in a while. So that, you know, that's, that's, I can already tell you that that moldy smell is already gone. Um, but that was giving this room a very funky odor. Uh, that window was just waterlogged. So now that it's gone, we're going to have a much nicer, <laughs> a much nicer uh, olfactory sensation in this room. Um, i got to cut this back like I'm doing with the others so I can paint that. And then that's it. That's all. We're done for now. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to, um, that one's next. Now, when I do that window, I'm going to take, I'm going to take this whole thing and we're going to lift it up and take it off the desk so it doesn't get ruined. But everything's got to come out. This is going to be, <laughs> this one, this one will be easy to take out because there's no wood left. Really, the only thing holding it together is tape. But, uh, yeah, definitely got to do some window wells for sure. Here and here. But overall, pretty uh, satisfied with the process. I'm going to put those windows on, on, um, on Facebook Marketplace for free. Um, people use these for art projects and stuff. So uh, that's what I'm going to do with these. They're gonna just, I'm just going to give them away. Um, let's see if anybody wants to take them. But yeah, let's get rid of that. One, two, three, four, five. I got five because I'm missing one. Um, yeah, I should have. Yeah, I'm missing one storm window. So that's why there's only five here. So. All righty, off I go. That'll be the that'll that'll be the end of this video. And uh, until the next, have a good time.